welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This is episode uh, number 57, and it's recorded on uh, April 21st of 2014, the day after Easter in 2014. And this week, I am back with my co-host, Bob. How's it going, Bob? It's going good. How are you? We seemed to miss each other last week, but that's okay. Things happen like that, so... Uh, I I was just a little late getting yeah. back home last night, last Monday. I'm sorry. That's okay. The three weeks before that were kind of a mess for me, so we had to skip those th- those three weeks. I still went ahead and put it out there because I wanted people to know that we we weren't dead or anything. You know, I wonder. Yeah, that's right. We weren't dead. We <laughs> have been doing things in the background. Yeah, yeah. It's been very busy. Now that Easter's over, though, that was my that was kind of my target date for some things I was working on. So. Now that's passed, it should be letting up. Actually, today felt a lot better. It felt more like normal to me today. So hopefully things will get back to regular schedule here. Well, that's good. Unfortunately, I'm the other way. I seem to be getting further and further behind on everything I work on. So. Well, that could happen to me too, but for right now, my goal was Easter. So now I'm like relaxed a little bit better, a little bit more relaxed. That's good. So, so last week we were going to talk about some logic gates and you're going to do that this week and you're also yes. going to revisit something we did back in episode six with a sensor yes and we for for folks watching uh mike just told me that he covered this in episode six and i was asked about it a couple weeks ago and then came across a sense got us got a hold of a sensor and just whipped up a little code so we'll we'll revisit it again so yeah so we'll get to that here in a second um how much did you do with rf bob i have done bits here and there over my career so um i kind of mentioned this last week in the show i've been playing with some software defined radio which is like the it's a little 19 dollar usb stick that allows you to define radio and bring all the tools to bring it in and I've been playing with it a lot the last week, and well, a lot in my spare time with the load that I had. But it's kind of neat, so I think I might start covering that. It's not necessarily electronics per se, but I think it's still a neat thing. You can figure out how you can listen to FM radio or ham radio all on your laptop. In fact, I have a little thing right now. It's tracking airplanes. Uh, all airplanes, commercial airlines, have this thing in them now. That's, and by 2012, 2020, they'll have to have it. Uh, but most of them have it now. It gives their altitude, their destination, uh, the direction, and their location. And it keeps transmitting it out once a second. So it's kind of neat. You can kind of watch the airplanes that are around you. Yeah. that that does Well, it is electronic, and it is an electronic gadget, and we do cover gadgets. Yeah. So in the next couple weeks, I'm going to start putting together some... I think it's fair game. Yeah. So I'm going to put together a couple little... Probably going to do them se- separate episodes, and we'll just play them during the show. Because there's lots of room for things to go wrong <laughs> with that stuff. So, <laughs> yes, you're right. There is lots of yeah. Places. Especially because I'm still learning it. It's just one of those things that interests me because in the uh, pulling things out of the air that's free and, and figuring out what's going on is very interesting. I think, and the software, some of the software is very neat too because it decodes some of the data that's in the air. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's kind of neat. I'll I'm gonna work on a couple different episodes, talk about different things, but I think that's we're gonna start covering it a little bit. It is a little side project for us side project okay yeah so i'm gonna like, hand it over to you and let you take over and uh do your little logic All gate right. are you ready for that yep let me or as ready as you ever gonna be <laughs> yep ready as i'll ever be let me switch over to my desktop all right we should be looking at the desktop now yeah i see a wikipedia page Yep. Well, you know, I started looking at that and, you know, we talked about logic gates at the, uh, at the end of, um, which episode was it? It was, um, I think 54. Yeah. And, and logic gates are one of those things. It's like shift registers or 555 timers or, uh, you know, lots of little components. You kind of, if you know that it's there, then it's, really good to have in your arsenal of of goodies to to work with when you're working on a project um, but logic gates basically it's a it's a generic term for um, what are called ors and ands and xors uh, and a whole family of uh, boolean functions and it's all based on zeros and ones uh, and 
this uh, Wikipedia page. I'm not going to I'm not going to go through this whole thing. It, it's 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 actually a real good read, uh, but I'm just going to hit the highlights of it because uh, I'm I'm not going to be insulting to the intelligence of people who watch this show. They can read just as well as I can. But I do want to point out a few things that um, basically there's a and I've got a I've got a demo of a couple of these of these chips and they're very simple. They're very easy to use. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, there's several of them. And basically th let's just start with the first one, this, what's called an and, and an and gate is exactly what it, what it sounds like. If the input, if the two inputs, if a is on and B is on, then the output is on. But in this truth, and these are in this right column, everything is called the truth table. And it basically it defines, it gives you a visual for what, uh, what the output is going to be. But for an AND, if both inputs aren't high, then, uh, then you get nothing. If both inputs are high, then you get an output. And OR, it does exactly what it uh, what you'd think it would be. If uh, one or the other input is high, then you get an output. Or if both are high, you get an output. And a not, uh, this, I, I kind of disagree with this. Um, a not really isn't a logic. Uh, to, to me, it's not a logic. It's, it's just an inverter. Um, but it is here. Lots of people call it uh, uh, you know, think of it as a logic uh, circuit, but I just think of it as an inverter. I guess that's the way I learned it in school. So, and then, uh, then you have this is this is where uh, sometimes people get in trouble. A NAND is nothing but the opposite of an AND. So, um, whatever your output, if you it, if you think, if you look at the way your output is for an AND, it's reversed for an AND. Uh, does that, uh, hopefully I'm making sense here. Yeah, right? so basically <laughs> it's like adding an inverter to the end of the AND box. Uh, essentially, yeah. That, that's one way of looking at it. Uh, I, I kind of look at it as input, but you're right. It's, it's, the, it's sticking an inverter onto the output. Uh, nor is the same is the same way, not an or. Uh, XOR is a little different in that it's um, you get an output if the input is different. So if if both inputs are high or both inputs are low, then you get then you get nothing. Uh, if one or the other is high and they're different, then you get an output. And then an XNOR is kind of the is the uh, is the same. It's just the reverse of an XOR. So these are, um, yeah, they're they're good little tools to have in your in your arsenal. And I picked up one other Wikipedia page that I wanted to wanted to show, and that's uh, somebody put together. And I can't imagine all the work that went into this, um, but somebody put together this list of all the 7400 um, ICs so for for any input you know for whatever project you have there's bound to be a there's a chip for it so uh, quad input NAND gates single input NAND gates every one of them is here and of course all of these have different voltages different settings different uh, uh, Inputs it and so for somebody who needs a particular uh, you know little IC, they're all they're all right here. They're all documented for us. So um, let me switch back. That was a lot of work by somebody. That was a lot of work by somebody. wasn't wasn't me. So here in my here in my little demo, and I actually have several things in here. Um, and I guess I knocked the camera without realizing, and I knocked the camera, and everything is now a little crooked. Um, but uh, these are uh, 
just to show how how simple. Um, uh, get this, move this off of here. Um, th this is the using one of these chips is is as easy as turning on and off pins. Uh, now in the real world, you probably wouldn't be uh, you you wouldn't be using an Arduino pin like this. I just wanted to show that you know how easy they are to turn on and off. Um, and and get an output, uh, you know, and get the output that you expect. And essentially, if when both pins are high, you you get the LED comes on. When one of them goes low, then then of course they they do just what they're supposed to do. If both are high, you get an output. If if one or the other or both are low, then you don't get an output. Um, but you could use these circuits to, uh, you know, you know, I was thinking about a, what, you know, when would you use an AND? Well, you might use an AND circuit if you, if you want to turn on a relay, but you also have a, some sort of safety switch. So if the safety switch isn't set and the, uh, it would prevent, the safety switch would prevent you from turning on a, turning on a relay or turning, uh, turning something on. Um, yeah, I, yeah, there's so many places you can use these that I, I I'm actually lost for. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's where, a, that's actually you... that's actually a very good one um, because you would use that like a like a key of some kind that would um, like protect you from doing something wrong. So, or it's you, you want to. Make sure you have somebody pushing the button so they're sure it's going to go on before that way the automation doesn't do it when it's not supposed to. That's right. Yeah. So so it's so it's it's one of uh, many. And then I put together this little. Uh, then I put together this little sketch. Uh, more than anything, just to. Uh, yeah. Just just to show off a little bit that you can turn things on and off and. Uh, and I see that there is a slight delay. The, uh, uh, the terminal window is getting things in real time, but there is a slight delay in the camera output. So, uh, okay. Um, so there, the, so the scrolling text is a little off from the camera. Yeah. Uh, oops. But uh, yeah, there's there's lots of places that you can use this, um, and then I also have um, a NOR that this uh, this first I see right here is the AND chip, and this is uh, no, that's the NOR here. This is the AND. So it has four inputs or eight inputs and four outputs voltage and ground in in a single package. So this is a and four and chip. This is a four yeah, this is a four two input uh AND gate. Uh and actually I've got the wrong I'm sorry. There's the AND. Okay, four, four input, or two input AND gates, and four of them all in one package. So it makes for a very convenient package. And then, then uh, let me go. So here, here's what the logic diagram actually looks like. Okay. So you get different, you can turn the, Turn them on and off you, all you want, and here is the NOR that I have in the, which is the second chip that you see, and here is its little, its logic diagram. And for it, I have this little, this little sketch, which will load up, and now it's turning on and off its lights. Just as the uh, uh, just as the uh, pins go high and low, 
Now, this actually does show, and I had to go look this up. You see how these two lights on the and are still on? Yes. That's because the Arduino has floating pins. Uh, okay. So the and gate, so those ands are reading that voltage that's in there. It's not a full five volts, but it's not zero either. It's enough. To, it's just enough probably to turn it's, it on then. It's just enough to turn it on where the NOR gates, uh, they're, they're looking for full voltage. So a, so a floating gate won't, set, won't turn them on. Um, but there's, they're very easy to use, and uh, you could ha there's a multitude of, of places where you, can, where you can use these. And one of them that we talked about at the at the end of the last episode was actually this is the I I went and looked up this looked up this chip. This is a four input OR gate. So we were talking about the uh, uh, the street light, uh -huh. and you could have different states that would turn on different combinations of. The, the red and green and yellow lights. Well, this is this is how you would this is how you would do it. So depending on which state you're in and a decade counter, you could turn you you could use this to turn on the right set of lights at any given time. Yeah, so, so you'd use multiple of these, one for like you'd have the decade counter go through like ten steps or whatever it is from all the lights and then you'd have the ores attached to whichever ones it needed to be on for. That's right. So uh, for somebody to do, uh, uh, and I was actually thinking about this because one of our viewers sent in a picture. He's got an antique, uh, uh, an antique street lamp that had, you know, the old style where it's all the lights are in one unit. Yes. And it sits in the middle of the street. He's got an antique one of those. And with a 555 timer, a decade counter, and a couple of these OR gates, he would have his he would have a working streetlight, with for, and he'd use five dollars worth of components. Right. And that's all. That's all it would take. So. Yeah, it's probably worth mentioning that these types of chips are very inexpensive. Oh yeah, yeah. The those two chips right there. I don't think either one of them were a dollar. So they're very inexpensive, easy to use, and very reliable. Um, I mean, you really can't, other other than blowing them up with too much current, you really can't screw you. You really can't screw them up. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, but they like any other component, they do have specs on on how much current you can have and uh, what voltage is, and uh, so they're you know for whatever application, you're bound to find the right chip out there somewhere. So, so there's logic gates. They're easy to use, and uh, that it's not. You know, once you start looking at these truth tables, it's very easy to find the exact component that you're going to need to do what you want. Right. So that so that's it for that's that's what I had for uh, for logic gates tonight. Okay. And then you had mentioned um, that you also looked at the other sensor. Do you want to go through that real quick as sure. well? Okay. Sure. All right. Let me, I guess I should have stayed on my desktop. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Where, okay. Video. There. Skype and I are not one. <laughs> so, I don't think Skype is one with anybody. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the, that's a whole other whole yeah. other story. So that's a whole other uh, show. <laughs> yeah, a whole other show. So this is so this is what I uh, this was a viewer question that, that I got asked about, um, and I didn't realize that you had done a. A show on this already, so I'm I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. I don't know if it's exactly the same. It looks a little bit different than what mine did. Um, well, it's a little ultrasonic sensor. Um, they're I think they're six bucks or something uh, on Amazon. 
six or seven dollars. They're very inexpensive. Um, the reading this data sheet, it is a little. Um, yeah, if you don't have some uh, some scientific background, some science in your background, then some of this doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but if you look right here in the background, I have this unit facing away. And let me load up. So it's on the back side of the breadboard. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You, you're, it's, uh, uh, you're looking at the back of it right here. Oh, okay. And it's over there, yeah. If I, yeah, if I turn this up, you can see the little... Yep, there. You can see it real good there. ...cylindrical uh, uh, front, two front pieces on it. So, so this is... Uh, so, in this sketch, uh, I've got some code to for the serial monitor... Um, but essentially, the, to, this is a very easy unit to um, to use. It's just got it's got four pins, uh, voltage ground, and then a trigger pin and an echo pin. Uh, and what you do is you turn on your trigger pin, and this is actually not right. Um, the trigger pin has to be on for at least ten microseconds for the unit to work. However, I found that it would occasionally give you a zero if you didn't. Um, it's a minimum of 10 microseconds. So I found that if you changed it to here to 11 microseconds, that you got better results in, your, in the code. So you turn on the trigger, 10 microseconds minimum, turn, it, turn that trigger pin off, and then wait for the pulse coming back in. And this echo pulse will give is essentially the distance. And the formula that you get out of the data sheet is you take whatever that duration is um, in milliseconds, divide it by 58, and you get centimeters. Or you can divide it by 148 and get inches. So I could easily switch. I'll just do this. So we'll change it to inches. And we'll change this. And serial monitor. There it is. And it's checking every, and it's and that's about, that's about the right distance. So if I stick my hand in here, it, it, it does change its value, so it's it's reading correctly. Uh, when I was testing this, it did, um, it did seem like it was about half a centimeter off. Uh, it so what's the maximum perfect. distance you could get? Do you try a maximum on it? According to the data sheet, it's four meters. Uh, when yeah, I was, that's what mine said too, and I couldn't get four meters out of it. Uh, I was actually able to get five. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, after, that, that was before I had the walls in here. I had all the foam, and I wonder if that was part of the mess. Maybe it was absorbing the sound? Uh, possibly. Uh, I was using real walls, um, and I could get five. Uh, past that, it got real dicey. You know, sometimes it would find something off in the distance, and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, I, I suspect that it's just not putting out a strong enough signal to go any further than that. Right. Um, but it's you know, it's a nice, simple, inexpensive, um, <coughs> sorry, easy to use um, sensor. Uh, so I actually have a little project that I'm that I'm working on right now with this guy. So that'll be, uh, that'll be in a future episode. Okay, good. So, so that's what, that's what I have for tonight. All right. So, um, before we go, let's talk about a couple of things that, uh, out of the Google plus community, I saw Jim put out there. He's, you got you and him and working on the, um, TV out thing. Arduino TV. Yes, yeah. We 
And he sent he, he sent that image out. That's that's impressive. I didn't have a chance to look through any of it in great detail. So over the next couple of days, uh, I'm going to go back out there and look at that. But that's really neat to be able to do TV out from a, from yes, an Arduino. Yes, it it is. Uh, it is a it is a little basic, which uh, which you'd expect. You know, given what an Arduino technically can do, you, right. one would expect that. But yeah, the uh, uh, the TV out that he's got is uh, looking pretty good now. So yeah. Uh, he sent me the this code and I kind of read through it and uh, um, it, his code was it was well documented and well written and even though I'm not familiar with those libraries it was easy to follow along so he's done a he's done a nice job with that so yeah that was really impressive so if you haven't been in the Google Host community go out and check it out because it's he's putting it out there and that's very helpful to everybody else too right so, so. and he's in the he's in the chat room tonight with us here too. Yeah, he, definitely appreciate that. That was kind of neat. I, I yeah. mean, it, it reminds me a lot of like the old style video games with the with the big fonts, but the fact that you can even do it to me is impressive. Yes, yeah, it did remind me of the '80s video games. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so that's that's very neat. I think what he, if I remember right, it was a scoreboard. I think he had up there, right, like home yes. and visitor or something like that. Yeah, so. he's got a scoreboard with a with a keypad attached to it. Um, and it and it's kind of reminiscent of a show we did uh, a while back with the uh, uh, controlling two radios. That was the genesis of that uh, demonstration. Was right. someone wanting to control a scoreboard remotely? So, right, exactly. So here he's got a TV being controlled by a, a little keypad and Arduino. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty impressive. Yep. Yeah, Jim figured that on his own for the most part, didn't he? Uh, pretty much, yeah. That's he's, good. He's done most of it. I've I've offered to help, but he sure hasn't needed much. It's nice to have other tinkerers out there like that. That's right. So, yeah. all right, that's what I have for tonight. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I have too. Um, I just a uh, few things for everybody to go. Just uh, remember that you can uh, follow us on YouTube, and you can download our stuff from pretty much any of the podcast directories, and if you find one where we're not, please let us know, and I'll get it out there. Uh, we're also, you can watch us on Roku. We have a Roku app, and if you still have a TiVo, TiVo's becoming popular again, I think, um, we are on TiVo as well, so you can watch the show and all of our shows on the network on TiVo or on Roku. Um, again, you can download us all from uh, iTunes or Dogcatcher or any of the other podcasting directories. And please tell a friend. That's how we're growing and we're actually growing. I was amazed at how many downloads we had during these two weeks that we weren't even on, Bob. Um, I recently went to a different tracking system and I, get, I got here, I guess it was a little Sunday. Sunday night I was looking at it and thinking, like, look at all the downloads we've had. <laughs> and we didn't even do a show. It's pretty crazy, actually. That was, you know. Well, and, and we're getting uh, viewer responses. I've had yeah. several about the, uh, the the GPS uh, unit that we did a month ago, and I'm getting questions every week about that. Yeah, so it's definitely the community is growing. And so we have a Google Plus community. So if you go to tech and click on community, you can go out for show notes for this show, contacts, and more. Go to the techsend.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.